Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. Whether you're using a page builder or not, understanding CSS will always play a vital role in web development. And if you're using a page builder specifically, there are things you'll not be able to do efficiently without knowing how to write CSS. So I'm gonna encourage you to learn a little bit about CSS even though you are using a page builder because the no code solution is not and cannot be absolute. There will always be a place for custom CSS. So in this video, I'm gonna show you seven CSS pro tips to enhance your workflow. Number one, use the not CSS pseudo class instead of writing multiple CSS. Say you have four cards like this and you wanna apply CSS property to all of them, uh, except the last one. Now, what you will typically do is uh, apply it to all of them and then select the last child and undo what you did. So I have a class on this card called uh, the CSS card. And then I'm just gonna give it a background of yellow. Now you can see that we have a background of yellow, but we wanna apply to all of them except the last one. So normally what uh, people usually do is to come in here and then do another declaration and then uh, have that uh, last child declaration and undo what has already been done. So now they have their CSS working and it works fine, it gives them the result, but there's more efficient way of doing this. So instead of using this, I'm gonna comment that out. Instead of using that, uh, why not just say CSS card and then you say it uh, not and inside that not you say you don't want the last child okay to be included and and then you give it a background of yellow and that is a more efficient way of writing that CSS so it is a shorter way uh, you don't have to write and undo what you did before so it's better than the first one Number two, use where or is CSS pseudo class function for multiple selectors. Let's say we wanna have uh, maybe uh, something, we wanna apply some CSS styles to these cards again. And in this case, we wanna apply a CSS uh, style to the pseudo element. Now I'm gonna just say that um, before, and I wanna apply uh, uh, some styles to the before and I have my content there and i'm just gonna write hello there so that you can see it okay so you can see that hello and we're gonna go ahead and style it so i'm gonna give it a background of red and then i'm gonna give it a, a, a color of white and then i'm gonna give it a padding of let's say one rem three rem we want to apply this same style to another card so we let me scroll down. I have another card here and I want to apply the same pseudo uh, element to another card. So I want it to be on every card of my page. So I have another uh, card here with a class of, you know, card two, CSS uh, card two. So now typically what people do is they will put a comma here and then write CSS card dash two uh, before. So you now see that that applies to the card too. But what if I tell you there's another way to write this using the pseudo class function where or is. So now I'm going to just copy the whole of this and then I'm gonna comment that out. And let's come back and just stay here so we can see. And then I'm gonna paste that again. Now, instead of writing these two times before, before two times, I'm just gonna take out this before. And then here, I'm gonna put a semicolon and write is and that and then i'm going to put a comma here now i still have the same result so it's going to apply this css style to any class that is inside here and then uh, for each of these classes it's going to apply it to its pseudo element so it's a shorter way of writing this and then you can also use where is this it's going to give you the same results now i'm not going to go into the details of the difference between is and where but i'm going to encourage you to check it out and then one thing i have to mention is that this has 92 percent browser support some older browser do not support it but most modern browsers support it so use it with care number three use custom css variables to apply styles to your classes so let's say now you have a class okay you think it's a good workflow It's usually a good workflow to have classes so you don't have any problem because you know that uh, let's say you have this class okay and and you want to apply let's say uh, a border radius to it 
So let's say I'm applying a 20 pixel border radius. I'm not going to use pixel. I'm just going to use rem now. Um, so you have this border radius, okay, on this class. And everything is good because you know that you are using a class and you are happy with it because if you want to make changes to this element, you're making it to all the elements that have that classes, right? All right, let's foresee uh, a problem with this. Uh, now, let's say you have another class. So you add this dot card, uh, CSS card dash two. And then you have uh, the same thing. It might look like we don't have any problem, but if you're using a page builder and then you are going to write this in the settings, inside the settings of each of the elements. Now, let me simulate that. I'm going to just undo that. And then now this is typically what will happen inside a page builder. So you're going to declare this because you want all your elements, all your, um, you want all your cards to have the same border radius. So you have the card, then let's say you had uh, another, another card, card three, you'll do the same. So let's say you have like 10 different kinds of card throughout your website. And then for each of these cards, you're going to apply border radius to RAM for each of them. Now, let's say down the line, you needed to change this border radius because maybe they just want it to be a bit rounder. Now, what you're going to do is you have to go into the 10 different classes to update this. And that is not a very smart way to work. But the best way to do this will be to use CSS variables for the border. So instead of using a, a, a hard coded value like this, now what I'm going to do is to first of all declare a variable. So typically a, glo a global variable is declared by root and then you have now this is the syntax. Then you, I'm going to have my, let me just call it my radius. Okay. Let me call it my R. So it's going to be, okay, let's use radius. Easy to read. And then I'm going to assign it a value of let's say three rem. Now, instead of using a value here, I'm going to use the, the variable. So I'm going to just say var dash dash my radius. And you can see for the card, for the first card, um, I think that something is wrong there. For the first card, I have my radius and then I'm going to copy this here and put here. And I still have my radius. Now, this is a better way of doing it. So let's say you are inside a page builder and you have these uh, scattered across your different elements and uh, the different classes. Now, the only thing you need to do if you ever need to update this radius is to go to that variable and update it. So I'm going to just take this to eight and then it's going to update all of them. So this is a more efficient way of working by using CSS variables. I have a couple of tutorials on my channel where I have used CSS variables and a very good example is the one that I did for the header builder. And if you want to check it out, you can check it out in the top right corner. And I'm going to link a couple of tutorials that I have done that have featured CSS variables. Number four, create a fallback for CSS variables by using this declaration. So let's say you have a variable here and this is my radius. Let's say for some reasons, this my radius was not available. So I'm just going to put double S here. So you can see that my radius is not no longer available because this is not the same as this. Now, um, you might wonder why would you want to use a variable that is not available? Well, it is not just in cases where the variable is not available, but also in cases where the value in the variable is not being supported by a particular browser. For instance, there are some browsers that don't support CSS flex gap. And there are some browsers that don't support certain other properties. And then if you put those properties in a variable, and usually it's a good idea in those cases where you want to use a property that is not supported by all browser, it is a very good idea to put it in a variable so that you can create a fallback for it. And how do you do that? So let's say this is one of those properties and this is no longer available. So if I put a comma here and put five rem, you can see that I have a fallback for this one. But for this one, I don't have a fallback. So to have a fallback, you have to put a comma and put your value. Now, what is going to happen is that the browser is going to check the variable first. If the variable is not supported or is missing, it's going to move to the next value, the fallback. So let's say that variable is available. But if that variable is supported, so let me make it supported. You see that it's going to default to the CSS variable that you use here. So the fallback will only be used if something goes wrong with the variable that you declared, either it is somehow not available or the value is not supported. Number five, format your CSS with line breaks. You've probably come across a situation like this where you have to write a lot of CSS with commas and commas and commas. And then you need to, uh, it's just getting so long that you wish it could be you know, shorter. Now in situation like this, you can always format your CSS by putting a line break. So if I come here 
just after the comma and then put enter you see it's still going to give me the same result but let me just comment this as since we are not using that so i'm going to use this also now we have this declaration here this rule and here i'm going to put my cursor here and put enter i'm going to put enter here and then i'm going to put enter here now be careful that you do not uh, put a space in the before because the before has to be written just the way you write it on the you know on the selector itself so there's no space and you can see that right here we have a more compressed uh, CSS rule now so if you don't have enough horizontal space uh, sometimes you're working inside a page builder usually sometimes the space available to write your CSS is usually very narrow so you can just uh, format your CSS this way and in this case uh, if you are writing out this CSS of course you will want to just um, uh, instead of writing it in two different places you want to uh, combine it like this put a comma here and put this and you will still have the same result and one more thing and if you're having maybe like a value that is extremely long there is nothing wrong for you to just break it there so let's say you have a calc function now sometimes it get really long so what you can do is that you can actually break this into another line now be careful don't overdo this so that it doesn't get too messy and unreadable but i'm just saying in a situation where the calc function or your value gets really long you can always break it in to make it more readable. A good use case of that will be if you're applying multiple uh, box shadows where you can have different box shadows. And in that case, uh, if I wanna, if I have a box shadow here, let's say a box, uh, a box shadow. And then for each of them now, so you see it gets really long. So you can actually break it, break it and just like that. And you can, you know, indent it to come here. So this becomes more readable. So for this one, I'm just going to make this 20. And this one is going to be 30. And this one is going to be, like, say, 50. So you can see I have that multiple drop shadow, but my code is readable, more readable than if they were on a straight line. And of course, the next CSS property can start here, like, say, color, like just like that. Number six, use minimum width for styles that apply to desktop. One major mistake that a couple of people do, I inclusive, is making the mistake of declaring a CSS and then going to the lower breakpoint to undo it. So let's say, for example, we have this CSS that we have applied this uh, rule. Now, I'm just going to remove that box shadow because we really don't need it. Now, so we apply this rule, this uh, hello, 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 yeah, that um, pseudo class. Now, we don't want this on mobile. So what people usually do is that they will go and, you know, go to create another media query. Okay, and then maybe they will say um, max width. Let's say max width uh, 1024 pixel. And then they will now... Uh, take the same thing that they did before, put there, and then they will just say, uh, they'll go down there and say, okay, we don't want this at the lower breakpoint. So I'm just gonna say display uh, none. Okay, so now when we move this to that breakpoint, you see that it displays none because we have created another media query on doing what we did before, okay? So by the time we increase, you can see we have that a CSS rule applied, but there is a more efficient way of doing that. So instead of declaring something and then using a maximum width to undo it, this media query, rather we're going to delete that. And then we're going to use a minimum width. So we are saying, now let me not delete what I did before. I'm just going to comment it out. But then in this case, I want, I'm going to copy this media query. And here I'm going to say, now I'm going to put it a minimum width. So this would no longer be maximum width. This will be minimum width of 1025. So I'm saying that oh, instead of doing this and then go back to undo it, I'm saying, look, this should only apply up to a minimum width of two of 1025. So from 1024 downward, this will not apply. So if I go down here, you can see that we have the same result, but with fewer codes and more efficient code. And this is going to, um, you know, just save some processing power at the lower breakpoint. In, instead of your mobile device doing the extra work of undoing what you're already doing here, it's just not going to apply. Number seven, use aspect ratio for consistent width and height 
ratio. Now I'm going to go down here where I have an image. And then for this image, I am going to just use my uh, selector tool and just select it. Now you see this image has a width of 100% and a height of 100%. So let's say we want this image to be, let's say, a square. And then I'm going to make it like 300 pixel by 300 pixel. So now I have a perfect square. Let's say I want to increase it for some reason. Maybe at a certain breakpoint, I want it to go either higher or smaller. So let's just say, let's make it a bit higher. Now I'll have to come in here. Let's say I'll make it, let's say 400, but then I'll have to always come back to change the height. So for every time I want to change the width, I will have to change the height. But this is a very inefficient way of working. So if you know that you have a specific ratio that you want your width and height to always be what you do is that you set the width and set the height to auto and therefore you are not going to be changing the height but then you're going to come and add an aspect ratio of one that means the your is one is to one okay one one is the same as one is to one so the width and the height will always have the same ratio so if i come here and increase the width it will always be the same height as the height an aspect ratio, you can use it for different types. So if, let's say you want the height to be twice the width. You can do two over one. Okay, that is okay. the width is twice the size of the height. And then when you increase it, it will maintain that ratio. Let's say you want the height to be twice. You say one over two. And then whatever you do, it will maintain the same ratio. And you can even use the standard ratio of, let's say, uh, 16 by 9. That is some screen resolution and this works really well, especially if you're working with video, a video element and you want this, you want to be able to set a width and the height should automatically adapt. Let's say, for example, you want to set a width of a hundred percent and then, and you want that, uh, the height to, you know, always be in the ratio of 16 by 9. So you can always set a width of 100%. And let's say you want the ratio to be the that uh, old 4 by 3 ratio. And you can, sorry, I use dots, should, should be slash. And you can still have the same result where anything you change here. So if I come here and reduce this, it's always going to be the same ratio. So that's it guys. I hope you found this useful. And if you did, let me know in the comment before. Let me know the specific ones that really made an impact. If there's any tip here you haven't heard of before, please let me know in the comment below. And also hit the like button. Subscribe if you haven't. And hit the notification so that you will not miss another tutorial. Until next time, have a great day.